Previously on all motorcycles, I introduced the Honda Hurricane CBR750, removed the saddle, eventually, hurt my leg and took off most of the body panels. In this episode I give the panels their first clean, locate the fuel leak, remove the petrol tank and make a start at trying to get to the leak. So I've had this on the trickle charger all day and I've just turned it over to fast charge now and seems to be going up okay so hopefully we can get some use out of this puppy. Plan for this evening, um, hang on let me zoom out a bit. So today it's still bright outside so I'm going to give the panels I've taken off a quick once over with some very cheap um very cheap i think it was one, i don't think it was one euro 49 cent um i don't even care about the wax once it washes the panels because it's just got a few years of i'm not sure if it's wax or paint or just needs a good freshen so i thought i had the greaser here in the shed but i don't so ideally I would have rinsed it, degreased it and then washed it, but an initial wash will help. So I'm going to do that while it's bright. We're going to pop, the, well not we, I am going to pop the tank off and hopefully try and diagnose where that leak is. You'll have probably some nice, potentially nice dub, mu, dubbed over music of me rinsing and washing with a comically, comically small brush. Because again, I forgot to buy a brush today. To actually clean the stuff oh and i've also got some stuff for hopefully bringing back this plastic and um, we'll give this black and a flash a go you're supposed to just spray it on and it might bring it back to something a bit more a bit less sun faded so nothing to lose we'll try it to the tool chest if you would is a translated version of the shop manual for this bike in particular now it is missing some things it does point to and there's like this there's supposed to be something here and there's nothing there but it's a translation from a Japanese only document and it's I'd say 90% there so I know it's not an official one I printed this and bound it um, I don't feel particularly bad for doing that because you cannot get this book in English and it's extremely even hard to get the real the Jap the original Japanese one so it will be useful to have it. Well, the manual is coming in useful already so I'm looking to remove the tank and it's showing if you'd focus two bolts. When I look here there's only one bolt. Now if I look under this bolt I can see oh sorry now it's an awkward angle for this. There's one bolt there and one bolt there. So this is obviously a trim piece. So I'm going to have to undo that bolt or Allen. Undo this Allen and take out this chunk and that chunk and get to these two bolts. And then these two bolts. Oh, and this looks like one nut. So you will see this next. It's getting harder and harder to get decent angles for this. So again, I'm saying a tripod is needed. So these again are T5 uh, Allen's. There he is. And there's no washers or anything there. Maybe I'm hiding a tray. I am a firm believer in these magnetic trays. They are a gift from God. 
magnets. Oh, can you see the bolt? Reassuringly tight again, these ones. Now. There's one up here, and I believe that's retaining this panel also. I don't... No, there's not. There's nothing under that cover. <laughs> I'm not sure if there should be. So we'll do this one next, and we'll get that panel off. Focus. I have to say, if I had all the original bolts, I could I'd say I could take all the fairings off basically with this. This one tool would probably take the whole all the fairings off. Little bits broken off of this piece to uh, for fixing. You can't see. Oh, you can't. See. You can see it clearly. Yeah. Bit as and I even noticed as I was washing out there. Um, as, as I was taking off the turf and all, I was just finding more and more little nicks and scratches and bruises. I suppose. Which... Sorry, I've been talking here for ages and I didn't even realise it was off. Fuse panel is in here, right? As it says on the fair and everything's there. Um, when I first turned the bike on, when I was buying it, um, the horn wasn't working. But I'm actually getting a look at it now, and this is the wiring for the horn. And something tells me it's not exactly factory wiring. <laughs> so it could be very something very simple. Look, a horn isn't the end of the world. I can get that for next to nothing. Um, and I got that panel off. This is exactly as I found it. That's one of the retaining bolts for the tank. And here is the other retaining bolt for the tank. And it's also not all the way home. It's tight. What should I say? Too tight for me to do at this awkward angle. <sighs> but. But look, again. This could easily explain why it's gushing fuel so badly. Because if someone was in rooting at the thing. Maybe they just didn't tighten. Put a fuel clip all the way on or a hose popped off or so yeah I'm being optimistic it should be as I say for the amount of fuel coming out of it when I turn the fuel on it will be an easily identifiable issue so we go deeper so I was going to do these off screen however this is still a T5 but um, you can't see it but I can feel that there's a nut on the end of this so some part is missing um, and they stuck a nut under it to hold it in place. And the upper, if you'd focus, is missing. So, not a lot holding this little panel. This one and this one, basically. Now, so there's the bolt in question, and you can see that, oh, focus, is a lot bigger. So that's definitely an after the fact bolt. And a big nut stuck on the end of it. So rather than mess around with all that, I do think I just do undo the, uh, the tank clips from here and from here and get the tank off that way. Well, want as I may, um, it appears I'm going to have to undo this bolt because, and of course that isn't a T5. It's probably a T6 or whatever the hell the next one is. Because, oh my God, what is this? Round it all, hell, that's what that is. Brilliant. Sorry. Um, sometimes these torques can get a good grip in there. Sorry, the reason I have to undo this bolt is because this fastener is torn to hell. Um, the screw keeps popping out, so I, I, I'm, I'm at a bad angle, so I need to shift this to get a good angle with a decent screw. And the nut on the bottom end of that is a 17, if you'd imagine that. So it just doesn't end. So it looks like this is going to be tonight's headache. 
That's the first issue I've had with the bike, so if that's all that's wrong, I ain't doing too bad. Well, the clock itself comes up trumps again. Trumps again. Um, it's got a 5.5 sock or Allen wrench or key or whatever you want to call it. Please. Oh God. That is worryingly tight. Right. We're gonna spray on some of this. Miracle in a can. Pray we can get that nut off. I'll spray this on and then I'll do the little bolt at the back of the tank and uh, that will give us some time to let this work. Oh yeah, that whole bolt is just rusted to hell. I'm not spraying myself. They use the stainless nut by the look of it though. It's just the uh, fastener itself. The bolt itself is rusted in place. Let me have a quick look at this here. Hey, we got us. And by we, I mean me. So yeah, this is, why do you see the length of this goddamn bolt? As I said, this is the only issue so far, so we're doing pretty good up to this point. I apologize for the 100% uh, amateurish camera work. I'm recording this on a phone, on my own, <laughs> as I go, with no plan and no structures. Right, I will, next time you see this, this will be out. The, I don't know what you call them, the cheeks, <laughs> the ear, sideburn fairings off. So I can get my hands at this bolt. And like I was saying, I can see why the other one was hand tight, because they obviously made, whoever was in here wrecked this one. So, Rather than wreck it, because this is the widest normal screwdriver I have. It's time to call out, hopefully, the old vintage cabinet maker screwdriver. And we'll see if this nut buster here won't dust it, as they say. I'm sure Shakiro Honda is turning in his grave as some ye olde carpenter's tool is being used on his precision. Oh yeah. Got that in an old, at an at a agricultural show one time. For just such an occasion. They're not, they're, they're not good for levering. Don't use them for levering. They'll snap clean in two. But fantastic for them wide flat heads. You can really, oh, you do damage with this. Now, this note, and then I'm gonna pop the tank one way or the other, look under it, turn on the fuel and see where it's gushing from. So at this point, I'm going to have to do something about this precision mount. <laughs> yeah. I actually think that's for the uh, the saddle to locate on, so it's nothing to do with the tank, so that's coming 
off. I, there's probably supposed to be. In fact, judging by these holes, a big rubber piece. Because all my other bikes have a rubber piece here for the tank. Well, here we are under the tank. Um, tank is just pivoted up. And as I was taking it up, um, at first I thought it was like a sender or something. But there's this little bar out of the tank. And it tracks this track. And then locates in in there. It's, it's like a it's like a the bonnet of a car. The way it pops up now it doesn't hold it in place or anything, but super cool. So I've wedged a little um, level over there just to keep everything level. So now, right. That's where the coolant goes. I want to check that. Make sure there's actual. I want to do that now, actually. Oh God. Hey, no, hey, no, strength. Oh. There's coolant in there, my eyes. The light down. Spider check. I think we're okay. Here we go. Oh no 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 no! Oh no! Oh, that's crusty. Oh, that is crusty. God damn! Oh, focus, focus. Sorry, that's the LED strobing. So, looks like I'll have to do a few cooling flushes. <laughs> not unexpected, not unexpected. Anyway, the key issue, fuel, fuel leak. Let's get to the bottom of that. Okay, so I'm going to turn on the fuel and see if I can't find the source of the leak. So... Nothing for us. So then just do it. Right, no time like the present. Let's go. Okay, uh, here I'll take you with me on a tour. So, we have our fuel petcock here. Pardon the glaring light. Oh, it's a daisy, it's one of those bouncy lights. Let's get some up lighting, that might be useful. Or just general. So, fuel, that's in the off position. Activated, comes on, comes through this tube. Through that tube. Round this crazy corner. Into, I believe, the fuel pump into the fuel pump into the fuel pump the fuel pump then sends it in two directions this way and there's another tube just behind this one in here my finger is on it trust me it is oh, it's there you can just see it there now and then it comes around this bend here and into the carburetor in there if you'd focus in there, in there, focus in there, in there. And the same story over here. It comes around in this tube here, around, and you can actually see where it goes into the carb. So obviously the fuel leak has to be here somewhere, but I'm not seeing it. So perhaps it's gushing out of one of the carbs, but because I can't get it to to happen, I don't know what to do. I'm sorry, I have you sitting on my toolbox just for now until I know if this is or isn't leaking. I'm trying to choke on. No. Now the leak won't leak. Okay, so because I can't get it to work now, I'm thinking of hooking up a battery, jumping it, and seeing will that 
trigger the leak. Because I don't think I'd be so lucky that my raging fuel leak would suddenly just stop. I can't believe I'm trying to trigger a fuel leak, but I need to know where it's coming from. So here we go. Okay, I have the battery hooked up. I have the shed door open just so I don't fumigate myself. So let's see if this doesn't cause a fuel leak, I guess. Choke already. Choke is fully off. We're idling at a thousand RPM. And fuel isn't gushing out of her. No. Oh, we got a bit. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, hot dog. Oh, she's leaking. Where is that coming from? Woohoo! Oh yeah, yes, we got her, we got her, look. Okay, I'm gonna turn the engine off before I blow the place to bits. So as that feed into the carbs is, is completely shot, but at least we found it. Here, into the carbs. Turn the fuel off, Frank. Now, to get to that, is gonna be airbox off and then I might have enough room because the airbox is this is the airbox and it's right in there so if I get the airbox out hopefully I won't have to mess up the carbs too much tanks up again trying to just get a bit of maneuvering room so I can get into this fuel line in here feeding the carbs it's leaking consulted the manual and it's telling me about a bolt that's hidden in here underneath this little clip retainer and the fuel line here. It's 10 mil. So just moved the bits, got the spanner on, so it got it loose. So now it's a good bit, good bit up. So now I'm going to undo this and that for one and two carb and see if I can't even get just a little bit of jiggling. I only take a little bit of this so I can see what's wrong. I don't need to take, well, I hope I have to take the whole thing off if I don't have to. So. Next is this and the next one in there. So GIS screwdrivers to the rescue. If you're going to be working on old, even not old, even modern Hondas or Jap bikes, it's well worth getting some of these uh, GIS screwdrivers. They're, they're well worth it. I have a set of lasers and I have a set of these, uh, I think these are CV Premier and they're both good, none, none was better than the other to be honest that I've found. Um, but the difference between using these and using a regular old Phillips is absolutely night and day. The amount of torque you can get onto the fasteners with these compared to a regular Phillips. You wouldn't believe it until you actually, uh, like look I'll show you with this. You, and this isn't just a magnetic tip doing this. This is just GIS in action now, probably won't work. But you wouldn't be able to do that with a Phillips unless it was a very strong magnet. And this isn't a particularly strong magnet. You can see the magnet won't hold it up. Oh, it will. Okay. Well, it's not particularly strong, but that's just the engineered head of the Japanese industrial standard bit. That's how much grip they have, so you can really go to town on them. Well, hello, and we're back. Um, it's been a few days since we last here, and I've recently come into possession of this nice Finney Amico two horsepower little compressor. So that may be featuring in future videos. Also, I've increased the frame rate from 30 to 60, so we'll see if that makes any difference um, to, the, to the quality of things. Also, my good neighbor gave me a loan of this phone tripod, so we'll see that might make things a bit better also. So, first thing I did this evening was um, Tried to put some air into the tires with my nice compressor and sorry we'll use the compressor after this something tells me this isn't supposed to come off focus yeah anyway you can see what it is it's, 
it's the valve for the uh yeah now with removable valves it's off the big stall i got the one into the into the back tire so there's 30 psi in the back but there's zilch in the front so she won't be going anywhere for a while also a little correction this little bonus holder upper can hold the tank up all by itself i don't need that little brace piece now so we've got that so today's mission um is to get to the end of this fuel line that is gushing the petrol so to get to there i suppose i could just disconnect it here but then i still am not able to take it off in there this air box probably has to come out now this is just a big long uh, 10 mil bolt here goes through the hole Hmm. Perhaps I should let down the fuel tank before I take this bolt out. And in fact, am I going to have to disconnect this gizmo to get the tank off? I would imagine I would. Unless I can tip the whole thing forward. That just pulls out of there. Very unique looking bolt. So I wouldn't, I try not to lose that if you can. All right, so this is a case of, I know I have a tool for this job, but I can't find it. And that is clamping off the uh, the main fuel hose to stop, because there's obviously going to be a little bit of fuel left in here when I disconnect it from the the tap. Uh, and I do have the proper hose clamps to stop that from happening. But can I find them? Of course not. So, mm -hmm. we'll see. So I'll disconnect that. I'll disconnect the sender, and then see about disconnecting the bonus lever now we just have a straight slot screwdriver and a jubilee clip and uh, this is not factory there's a little um, clip on hose clamp just behind this is factory so i don't know if someone just slid it back and didn't realize it was there and said oh i need to put something on and put this thing on but you can't beat jubilee clips Yes, they work until they don't. Okay, so that's. Oh, should we loosen it off fully? Right, so now a fuel sander comes down here, around here. Oh, it's retained. That's a nice little retention clip in there now. Keeping it all safe and sound. Mr. Honda thinking of me again. Saying that, that Frank fella, he's going to lose that clip in the middle of that frame. So I'm going to build something for him so he doesn't. Good man. Shakiro, the absolute ledge bag. But yeah, that seems awfully long. Would you agree for something that comes here to here? Yes. I don't know. It's off anyway. Now, how do I try and get petrol in my eyes? Ooh. Actually, I'd probably be better off just clamping that further down. Like in here. Now, before I go any further, lads, I just want, and ladies, I just want to say thanks very much to everyone who's watched the last video and gave me such nice feedback on it. It was, it's, it's nice when you put something out there and people say, you know, good job, so. Thank you all. Um, anyway, genuinely, thanks. I, I was nervous putting it out there, so I appreciate it. Now, um, we're going to try and very gently coax that fuel line off. Oh. Like all the other rubbers on this bike, I am uh, impressed by how uh, 
I suppose rubbery or elastic it's remained considering it's 34 years I might actually try smaller to be considering it's age um, do -do 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 -do. now um, don't be humming any songs bit of a scratch there such is life adds character I'm expecting there to be a barb on the end of this line. A hole. I think I'm seeing petrol. Well, I can oh I can smell petrol for sure. Let's see. Is there a little wiggle? Oh. Wiggle a bit. Just wiggle a bit. A hole. Okay. So at this point, I'm getting some safety glasses. I know, I know. I know some people probably laugh at me for putting these on at this point, but uh, I'd rather not have petrol in my eye. <laughs> it's the nurse in me coming out. Okay, also time to get a rag. It's always worth having a good supply of rags in a shed or a garage or... Okay. At this point, I'm not sure if it's my crappy clamp that's leaking or if it's just coming straight out of the tank. Oh, there's that barb I was talking about. Do -do -do -do. Mm. Are you going to have to get out of the habit of humming copyrighted songs? At this point, he realised he had the fuel not turned off. Oh God. Okay. Sorry, I hope you just haven't been looking at the back of my head for the last little while nothing like the smell of gold juice is there lads right right so yeah I've actually just checked the manual there and I've actually done the right order you're supposed to take all this end off first then lift it up and remove the pin of the washer from the, the tank support arm and the whole tank can be put away now before I lift the tank up I have to figure out where I'm going to put it. I'm just going to put it outside for now. Right, let's have a look at this pin and washer. Sorry, now. Oh, it's getting in the way of the light. Hindsight, maybe taking that bolt out wasn't such a good idea. So that piece in the center frame there, that is what we are looking at right now. Try and remove There's a pin and a washer, and the washer is coming through there. Well, I don't think it is actually supposed to be coming through, so let's just try and put that right off the hop. It's managed to go through the washer and around it. Oh, no. Anyway. 
Can you see anything there? And basically, there's a, there's a split pin. And it'll probably be easier to be at the other side to do this. There's the pin and the washer. Oh. And that whole thing should just. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay then. Well, the tank is good and loose. The tank is, should be fully disconnected. I should just be able to. Very carefully. Oh, the breeders. breeders. There is a breeder tube. Can you see it from the tank down? So we'll just pull this guy up. You can see here, hang on, now. moving the tripod is defeating the purpose of the tripod. Hang on. Ooh. Make some adjustments here. Move her blinding light. That'll do. Dun, dun, dun. Oh god, where is that going? Come on. Come on. Okay. Now for this one, sorry, we have to go back handheld just for this one. Um, there, down here, you can see it ditching in behind the uh, airbox. Snakes around. Going to the battery box. Oh god, that's her there. Yeah, slightly clearer lens. That's her there, and it snakes down here. joins on here to this breeder section so that unless I'm gravely mistaken it is yeah that is so this T piece this is the breeder and that breeder comes out down yonder <laughs> so if I pop this there's a tiny little clip it's like a little metal pressure clip. Right, so I popped off that uh, breather hose off the, on the far side of the bike. So this should should be in the key word. Good look at the engine base. I'm just going to put the tank somewhere a bit safer than right there. Now, so as I was saying, now we get our first good look in the engine bay. And um, sorry, now no, I'm moving the, mount, the tripod again. Um, for all its size in its tank and its body, the engine itself is actually very compact when you see it in there. I mean, the, the bottom of the tank, there's a good bit of distance considering the, the, the tank sits atop all this. So, it's it's a compact little unit and I actually haven't said it yet. I'm surprised I didn't say it in the uh, intro um, This hurricane has gear driven cams the 600 F had a chain and the 1000 F had a chain so um, Again a new feature of the 700 is 750 is the fact that they gave it the gear the gear driven cams Which just makes the engine Absolutely bomb proof and um, it was why I kind of knew even though the, the, the guys I bought it off said it had been laid up for a long time it's like look those gear driven cam engines there they're built like absolute tanks, so I suppose um, building it for the Japanese market, maybe they figured we'll just throw everything we physically can at it. Um, just looking at the coils there, one high, one low. I'm not sure if that's a, a factory feature or if something's off a bit there. It doesn't look un particularly bad. We have a breather from the crankcase. Oh, a little bit of maneuver. You can see it there. Um, from the crankcase to the airbox. So this is the airbox and air fuel leak is air fuel leak is right down in there. So I want to take the fuel the air box off and the manif inlet manifolds to be able to get to I'm, what I'm hoping is just a loose connection. Um, this stuff, it looks like board crap, but I think it's just oxidized aluminium. Um, 
The paint isn't good, Nick. I tell you, with a bit of a clean, this bike is going to be gleaming. And I might take a, a gander at the plugs at some stage. They're well in there. Anyway, don't be getting distracted. There we are. So, airbox. I tell you, I'm so glad I printed this puppy off. So, I know I'm cheating, but it's the way to do it. So, I removed the fuel tank, did that right. Removed the tube from the air cleaner case. So, that's that lad there. Remove the captor. I have no idea what a captor is. <laughs> so, I hope they're talking about this lad here. Just do that. Uh, and then remove the bolt outside the air cleaner cover. Now, those bolts are down here. There's one on each side under the intakes. And there is a sneaky one underneath the fuel lines here. And then it says, remove the air cleaner mounting ports, which are those boys that I just pointed at. And then remove the air cleaner upwards. So this puppy here is, you can't see that, it is a uh, 10 mil. And most of the bolts have been 10 mil so far. So kudos to Mr. Honda. So. Oh wow, okay, two hands. Bolt montage. Taking bolts off montage. Taking all the bolts off montage. Edit cut, edit cut, montage. Yeah, sorry about that. I'll probably mute that bit. So now. there there's no room oh there's no room on the other side for the tripod but literally under the other intake there is the exact same bolt so you're not missing anything okay so there's two bolts there because i took out the other one and you actually may have missed something because this piece came away so i'm not sure if that piece also comes away so we'll i'll give that a go now oh yeah yeah it looks like it'll come away oh, what's retaining us here now Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's a nice little piece. Another intake here. So it's got a grill here. And it's still just sucking air from there. Anyway, it goes somewhere nice and safe. Okay, so now we have air. I call them sneaky bolts, but they're not particularly sneaky. Um, I've already loosened this one. Focus. And on the other side, so there, there, there's one in the mirror image of this on the other side as well. Where this fuel line is located, you can see the bolt just hide under there. I'm just going to use a 10 mil spanner to loosen that rather than a socket because I just don't want to be mangling this. So it's a spanner for the uh, throttle side. And we got this off. I have taken out the bolt from here and the bolt from here. And you can't see the little duct from here. And the same on the far side. So now we have a bit of... Bit of wobble in our air box where previously there was none. So I'm going to loosen and loosen the manifold for the carbs. I believe I've done this one already. I've done that one already. That's loose. And just this one next. Again, JS screwdriver makes this so much easier. You can really, oh God, oh God, no, 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 oh God. I don't like that. I don't like that one bit. Plenty of loosening around to them. Also, I'm slightly anxious that the spider that was on the fairing has taken up residence in here. Do not want to damage this. Little trick. Oh yeah, that just worked a treat there. Um, if you find you can't loosen something, this is something my grandfather taught me. Say you're on a nut or, a, or like this, a screw, and you're... Uh, and the rubber was bending, I was afraid of it cracking there. Try tightening it. Because it might just go a little bit, and then once it goes, you'll find it loose and a lot easier. And um, so that worked a treat there. So I'll do the same here. Oh, this one's really bad on. Oh, yeah, really bad on. So what we're going to do is give ourselves a bit of room here and take whatever the hell this is off. 
What is this? A breather that goes nowhere. Perhaps this is the captor in the manual it was talking about. Now I can see what I'm doing. Sorry if you can't see what I'm doing. This is a breather hose onto the curbs. Just to get me slightly better angle of attack onto this puppy here. Give yourself the best chance you can, you know. So tightened and then loosened. Oh yeah. And yeah, there's a lot of spider webbage in around these intakes. So heebies are jeebies, as they say. That's nice and loose. That's nice and loose. We'll get our pipe back on potentially soon. So you, I literally just missed it there. Where are I? Sorry, moving the tripod. Um, just the whole thing, all the manifolds just popped out there beautifully. So now, according to the manual, this thing should lift upwards. So we'll find out promptly if that's the case. What am I getting held up on? Fuel. Hopefully Shellob doesn't come and try and kill me. Okay, something is holding us back. How in the hell is that supposed to go down in there? Okay, so I've done a bit of root and a bit of shaking. And my best get is Gesk is sorry, now this is a fuel line and there's one on the other side as well. This is also the fuel box down here, air box, fuel box, air box. So it physically won't be able to get up over this. And the same on the other side. It's tight on the back to the uh, main fuel feed to the pump. So I'm thinking, I know that's dangerous, but I'm thinking separate the fuel lines this side and that side and fold them forward, which should let this thing come out. That's my best guess. Because we're nearly there. So, plan. Undo this lad, undo the other one, and uh, maneuver the thing so we can get, get things moving. Safety goggles are going back on just because I don't want patched in my eyes. And this is actually the main feed here that's causing the leak in the first place. So, I'll we'll start with this one, I guess. There's our petrol soakage rag. Put sure to be apply the petrol. And my handy bobby screwdriver. I have to say, I know I've said it in the last video about the, uh, the body panel rubbers, but even these tubes, I'm mightily impressed they haven't perished or lost their elasticity because it'd be a pain if they were just splitting and cracking all over the place. I don't know if it's a natural rubber they used back then or what, but it, it's a treat. Okay, so same on the far side, no petrol reading in that one. Same on the far side. Okay, so we're a few minutes later, and no joy. Well, I've taken the fuel pipes off each side and drained the juice out of this. I've tried a bit of maneuvering, can't get it out. And I'm figuring it's this bracket here is stopping it retracting fully. And that bracket holds the fuel pump in place. And that bracket is held in place by one 10 mil bolt. So we'll loosen this off if we can without Rounding it off. Does anyone else do this where they loosen it with the ratchet and then just loosen it by hand? Or am I just special? Nice. So, put that straight. 
right back in there because I will 100% lose that. Okay. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so the bracket is loose, fuel pipes are off. Not quite loose enough. Get that right out of the way. Probably I can get that back in place. Oh yeah. Warrants further investigation. I hardly, I, I hardly take the subframe off now, Mr. Honda. Don't tell me I have to take the subframe off because that is not happening. No. To make it look so easy, it just comes straight up, but it won't because of this. So I am on the accelerator side of the bike, the right side of the bike, and I'm going to uh, take off this piece here. Three GIS bolts and little retainer clip to hold this piece in place. There's one here, here, and here. These, a breather and a cable, they're both actual cables, went over this intake and were held in place by this. So take that out. Now hopefully there isn't a giant spider in here. So. The movie might end here very quickly. It should just pop out. Back in there so I don't lose it. There's our air cleaner, aka an air filter in Ireland. It's not the worst nick I've ever seen. I'm not sure how hard they are to find. Um, seen some use, but there's nothing obviously wrong with it. But if I can get one, I will definitely change it. Now, let's see if we can't get this air box out. Let's see if that makes any difference. Why would it make any difference? Oh my god, seriously. This is going to be this video's bell counter moment, this thing. This side, there is no more we can come over. So, Still, Hey, back to rock. 
Cause it. What the hell, lads? We get it to this point, and then we get no further. But why? Okay, let's try that this side. Let's try and get this side. Tell you, the more I'm looking at this, the more I really think that subframe's going to come off, or at least pivot. If I take these two bolts out, the whole thing will tilt back. But I do not want to do that. And in fact, I really don't think I should have to do that. There's no way, <laughs> famous last words, there is no way I'm going to have to take the subframe or loosen the subframe to take the airbox off. They, they, they are not that sick. <sighs> Read this again. Right, I'm gonna try. I'm just. I'm gonna take this this off as well. Just to give ourselves the most room we possibly can. Now, if that makes the difference, I'm gonna call myself an idiot, and I'll happily call myself an idiot. So now we have lots of room. Airbox. Don't worry about it. That's all it took. Still the fuel lines are getting in the way, but I don't think it's even them. Oh, let me fall. Move the airbox upwards from the frame. I'm trying, manual. I am trying. Oh, and I do not want to break this airbox. This is a wind up. Has to be. That is still on it in that. Remove the captor. I hope they're not talking about remove the carburetors because I don't fancy that. Not one bit. But the more I look at these images, you can't see the curbs. And you can't see the curbs. In fact, they still have the panels on. So that is this. Maybe you do have to take the curbs out. Jesus Christ. Okay, then. How does one take the curbs out? I swear to God, if they say take the airbox out, I will freak. Removal. Remove the air hose, breather hose, vacuum line, remove the fuel tubes, auto cock, air hoses. Undo the coke cha the, co the choke cable, undo the throttle cables, undo the inlet venturi clamps. Using a container and a length of tube with screwdriver, drain off the fuel and float bowls at the engine, side of the carbs, undo the carb clamps, pull back, release the carbs. No, 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 no. You can't. Camera is getting dangerously flat now, lads. Okay, it's, she's going to drop that any second now. I'm as close as I've gotten to getting this off. I've looked up a thousand F taking them off, and you don't have to take off the subframe or the carbs. So, come on, you.
Right, it's getting late. I'm going to admit defeat before I damage something for the night and uh, come out of another day. So yeah, I'll go from here another day. Hi guys, I was so annoyed that I didn't record an outro, so here it is. If you have been, thank you for watching. I'm sorry not much happened on this episode, but I'm confident that in episode 3 I will finally get to that leak in fuel hose, and then I can move on to the essential jobs like changing the oil, flushing the coolant, and then move on to servicing the brakes and the shocks, and touching up the frame, and then whatever else this bike throws at me. So until next time, bye!